Hello, I'm Billy Barnwell, President of Machinist Wood Pulp and Paper Council. This week we held our conference at the Intercontinental Riverfront Hotel in St. Paul, Minnesota. We got underway Monday evening when delegates, speakers, and guests from all over the country began arriving and registering for the conference. Tuesday, after a breakfast provided by American Income Life, we opened the meeting with an invitation by Local Lodge 1034 President Richard Holland. Then we were welcomed to St. Paul by Midwest Territory GBP Steve Galloway. GBP Galloway explained the importance of the wood pulp and paper sector to the territory and to our union. Next, I gave an opening statement in which I stressed the working nature of this conference and asked each delegate, speaker, and guest to pay close attention and fully participate in the work of the conference. To get that work started, I assigned each delegate to a committee and tasked each committee to provide a report to the full conference. After committee assignments were made, Julie Fridgen, Director of the Women's and Human Rights Department, spoke about the importance of ensuring human rights, such as freedom of association. She also discussed the IAM LEADS program and the importance of developing our union sisters into our union leaders. After a short break, Russ Gitlin, President of Guide Dogs of America, Tender Loving Canines, introduced the Council to Kaylee and her autistic son's dog, Orion. Kaylee spoke to us about the ways Orion has changed her family's life for the better. Russ also spoke to us about ways to fundraise for GDA. Next on the agenda, Southern Territory GBP Ricky Wallace spoke to us about organizing opportunities in the wood pulp and paper sector in the South. He emphasized the importance of growing our strength in this sector by organizing and recognized the strong showing of delegates from the Southern Territory. After GBP Wallace, our political and legislative director, Hassan Solomon, gave a typically fiery speech about the importance of being involved and at the table in Washington. We stressed the need to ramp up our efforts with the critical midterm elections coming in November of this year. Before lunch, we heard from Michael Othout, Director of Safety, Health, Apprenticeship, and Scholarship Programs at Headquarters. After the election of officers, our international president, Robert Martinez Jr., gave the keynote address. He talked at length about the strength of this sector, the importance of organizing, and the challenges faced by our organization both during and after COVID. After IP Martinez's exciting speech, we heard from Carola Show, President of Building Workers Inter International. Carola talked about the struggles of workers around the world, Ukraine in particular. Next, we heard from our GST sister Doris Cervantes about the steps her department has taken to keep our union financially strong through the pandemic. She announced forcefully that our union is financially prepared to support our membership and standing up to companies who would slide us at the bargaining table. Laura Ewan, Associate General Counsel, followed up by describing the changing legal landscape under the Biden administration. She explained to the conference the impacts of NLRB appointments and how the philosophy of the board has changed in favor of labor. Our final speaker of a busy first day was Cohen Vanderview, Global Wood and Forestry Director for Building and Woodworkers International. Cohen presented an interactive program in which participants took part in an online quiz about forestry products, their points of origin, and the nature of their certification. He then talked about how unions can and should be involved in the forest certification process. After our final speaker, the first day adjourned, the committee's going to work on the reports which would be due over the next two days of the conference. Wednesday, we opened day two of the conference by hearing reports from the committees on education, legislative, apprenticeships, and safety and health. Each committee did a great job of identifying issues critical to our sector and adopting resolutions to address each issue. After committee reports, our current Secretary Treasurer, Brother John Irvine, announced that due to his appointment as an education representative at W3, he'd be stepping down from his position with the Council. Brother Irvine has done outstanding work for the members of this Council and this sector in general and received a well-deserved round of applause from the delegates. As his position was now open, the Council appointed Brother Brandon Bryant to fill the remainder of the term. After which, Brother Bryant, along with Brother Steigoff and Brother Bennett, were installed to their new offices by our international president. With council business settled, we moved on to our day two agenda. Next, Brother Vinny Sarasso spoke to us about the IAM's Addiction Services Department. He explained the program and told us about the differences in our program and traditional EAPs. After a short break, our program continued with Sister Mary McHugh, passionately telling us about the programs offered at the William W. Wimper Center. She stressed the importance of getting education out to all of our members 
by any means available. Next, WinCamp talked to us about the Strategic Resources Department and the services it provides for our membership. She explained the ways by which maps can be developed to target specific industries and companies for organizing. After lunch, the conference was split into two breakout sessions focused on organizing. One was led by Jason Woodward and Mike Evans of the IAM Organizing Department, and the other by Mary McHugh, Director of W3. On our final day of the conference, we heard from Eastern Territory General Vice President David Sullivan. GVP Sullivan spoke about getting the wood pulp and paper locals in the East more active in this council. He also stressed the importance of organizing and holding politicians accountable to their constituents. That was followed by a Zoom appearance by the President of the Maine State Senate, Senator Troy Jackson. Senator Jackson discussed the struggles of Maine loggers caused by their classification as independent contractors and the importance of laws which would make it possible for them to organize. Brother John Steigoff, District 77 Directing Business Representative, then addressed the delegates and welcomed us to his home city. He explained that the paper industry had provided him the lifestyle he currently enjoys and provided us with the paper hats worn by workers at a nearby facility. Next, Mike Rose, Chief of Staff of the IP for the Woodworks Department, gave a rousing speech recognizing the members and the work they do to keep this union strong. Finally, we wrapped up a packed full three-day agenda closing remarks, comments, and our final raffle of the week. I'm very proud, by the way, that this conference between our COVID tournament, raffles, and tech donation raised over $10,000 for guide dogs. So as you can see, we had a busy, informative, and I hope enjoyable conference. My hope is that each delegate will go home better equipped to represent their members, and that the information gathered here will be taken back to make our members better activists.